Sands Maths channel. I'm now answering question number 10 from the June 2024, the replacement R paper uh, for the Pure Mathematics P1 International A-Level at Excel exam. And in this question here, we're told about the curve C, which has got the equation y equals 2 over 3x cubed minus 25x minus 56 over x plus 194 over 3, where x is greater than 0. The point P which lies on C has coordinates 2, negative 8. Show that an equation of the tangent to C at P is y equals minus 3x minus 2. So we got to find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point P. Okay, so to find the equation of the tangent, first you have to understand that the tangent is a straight line. Okay, so the equation of a tangent is basically finding the equation of a straight line. And to find the equation of a straight line, we need two bits of information. Firstly, we need to know um, any point on the line, which is, we have got point P, which is 2, negative 8, so we have a point on the line. And the second thing we need to know is the gradient of the line. The gradient, okay, of the tangent, okay, of the curve at P. So we need to find the gradient of the tangent at P. That's what we need to find. So I'm just going to draw a random type of curve now here. A tangent to a curve is like a straight line, which just brushes past the curve. And I, I, I know the equation of the tangent, so I can, I can kind of like um, change this a bit. Okay, the equation of the tangent, a tangent is like a straight line, which just touches the curve at a certain point, but doesn't cut through it. Okay, so for example, this, this I mean, I, I'm not drawing an accurate diagram, of course, but just imagine this is a point P, which has got the coordinates 2, negative 8. This would be the tangent, which has the same gradient of the curve at that point. Okay, so we've got to find the gradient. We know that it's negative 3, but we have to show that. So we've got to find the gradient of the curve at this point. Okay, so that's what we've got to find. Okay, so that's when x equals 2. So what we can do is we can take our equation and we can rewrite this in such a way that it's ready for us to differentiate. Because basically we need to find dy dx, okay, when, okay, at p, when x equals 2, all right? So to find dy dx, we've got to first uh, take this expression and get it ready for differentiation. This term is fine, this term is fine, this one has to be written with the x on the numerator. So you have y equals 2 over 3 x squared minus 25 x minus 56 times x to the power of negative 1 plus 194 over 3. We haven't differentiated yet, we just prepared it for differentiation. Remember 56 over x is the same as 56 times 1 over x, which is like 56 times x to the power of negative 1 using the laws of indices. So we need to find dy dx. So we got to multiply by the power. So 2 times um, 2 thirds. Sorry, this is the cube. Sorry. It's a silly mistake there. You got to. That's a 3 here. Very careful. So 3 times 2 over 3. 3 counts to leave you with 2. And take 1 from the power. So you multiply by the power. So 2 thirds times the 3 is 2. And then take 1 from the power. Here, if you take 1 from the power here, it becomes a. Uh, power of zero okay so you multiply by the power and then take one from the power so you end up with minus 25 because x to the power of zero is one any any term which has just x you just drop the x here we multiply by the power so minus one times minus 56 is plus 56 and here you have x to the power of negative two and the constant term just gets dropped becomes zero so this is the gradient function for this curve and we want to find the gradient when x equals two so the gradient of the tangent when at p is when x equals 2 in this is going to be 2 times 2 squared minus 25 plus, I'll write this as 56 over 2 squared. Okay, because 56 over x, 56 times x power minus 2 is like 56 over x squared. All right, so this will give you the value of the gradient. That's 2 times 4, which is 8 minus 25 plus 56 over 4, okay, um, that's going to be 14, I think. 4 into 5 goes 1 time, remainder 1, and 4 into 16 goes 4 times, and so that's going to give you 8 minus 24, 8 minus 25 plus 14. You can say 8 plus 14, that's going to be 22, 
minus 25 is negative 3. And that's exactly what we were looking for, the gradient to be negative 3. Okay, so now we know that the gradient is negative 3. And the point P is, through, is uh, 2. 2 and negative 8. Okay, so if we have that information, we can now find the equation of the curve y minus, or the, the, the tangent y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus minus 8 equals m, which is negative 3 times x minus 2. So the x, the y coordinate goes in here, the x coordinate goes in there, and the gradient goes over here. So you have y plus 8 is negative 3x plus 6. So y equals negative 3x, 6 minus 8 is negative 2. And that's exactly as we had to show. A lot of students like to use this other method where you just write y equals mx plus c, okay, which in this type of question probably works out quite nicely. I prefer to use this for all types of questions. It makes life easier, especially when the gradients and stuff become complicated. But this is perfectly fine to use. I do gently nudge my students towards this method because eventually the, you'll find that this becomes you know, easier for you later on. Anyway, this is a minus 8 equals, instead of m, you put negative 3 times x, which is 2 plus c. So you find what c is, basically. So minus 8 equals minus 6 plus c. So you have to, minus 8 plus 6 is 2, so c is negative 2, sorry. So c is negative 2, and the gradient is negative 3. So we can say y equals mx plus c. So y equals minus 3x minus 2, same answer. Okay, so that's an alternative way of doing it. But there's the answer to part A. Okay, we found the equation of the tangent to the curve at C. Now, for part B, it says the point Q also lies on C. Given that the tangent to C at Q is parallel to the tangent to C at P, find using algebra and showing you're working the exact, the exact x coordinate of Q. So we need a few things here, which I'll, I'll bring. Okay, so here I have some of the information we need from part A of the question. Equation of the curve, the differential of this equation, the gradient function, the point P coordinates, which is 2, negative 8, and the gradient of the tangent at P, which is y equals minus 3x minus 2. So it says, it says, given that the tangent to C at Q, the tangent to this curve at point Q, is parallel to the tangent to C at P, which means that the gradient of the tangent at Q is going to be the same because they're parallel, so it would be negative 3, is that Q? Okay, find using algebra and showing you're working the exact x coordinate of Q. So we know that at Q, at Q, okay, dy dx is equal to negative 3. So we can take our formula for the gradient, which is dy dx equals 2x squared minus 25 plus 56x to the power of minus 2. And we can equate that to negative 3. So we have 2x squared plus 56 over x squared. Okay, minus 25 is equal to negative 3. Add 3 to both sides. 2x squared plus 56 over x squared. And you're going to have plus or minus, sorry, 22 is equal to 0. And what we can do here in order to try to solve this, to get rid of the fraction, we can multiply both sides by x squared to get rid of the fraction. That gives us 2x to the power 4 plus 56 minus 22x squared equals 0. So this is something that we can rearrange and we can divide by 2 in fact first. That gives us x to the power 4 minus 11x squared plus 28 equals 0. 2 into 5 goes 2 times remainder 1, yeah, 28. So there we have um, an equation which is kind of like a disguised quadratic. It's a quartic equation. You can treat it like a quadratic because this term is the square of that term. So for example, to make it more familiar, you can say let x equals b. For, uh, let, me, let me use u. Let, let x equals um, u squared. x equals u squared. Okay, so if x is u squared, um, sorry, the other way around. Let u equal x squared. So I'm going to introduce a letter u. I'm going to call it x squared. So this will be minus 11, okay, u. 
that means u squared will be x to the power 4. So this is going to be u squared plus 28 equals 0. Now it looks familiar like a quadratic. And we can try to factorize this. Hopefully it factorizes. Let's see. We're going to have two negatives. You have u and u and two minus signs. And you can see 28 is made of, um, let's see, 8 times, 7 times 4. 7 fours are 28. Yes, 7 and 4. Okay, if you add them together, you get negative 11. Multiply them, you get plus 28. Okay, so u is equal to 7 and u is equal to 4. Okay, and therefore now we can... Let's have a look. Yep, that's fine. So now we can say we know u equals x squared. So we can say x squared equals 7 and x squared equals 4. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 7, and x equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is x equals plus or minus 2. Okay, now we can use the values of x as root 7, and we can use the value of x as 2, right? Why? Because x is greater than 2. We can only use these two values. Now we already know when x equals 2, this is at p. Okay, so therefore, this must be at Q. So it tells, it tells us to find the exact X coordinate of Q. The exact X coordinate of Q. So that means that it implies that our X coordinate of Q is going to be as a cert. So we're not required to find the Y coordinate. So this is the answer. Uh, the X coordinate of Q is uh, root 7. So this is the answer. And the question does mention that it should be in exact form. Okay, so basically, uh, we rejected these answers, negative root 7 and negative 2, all right, because y, x must be greater than 0, so those were rejected. Okay, so we accepted these two answers, which was root, which was 2, and we know that already is the coordinate of p, the x coordinate of p, and so therefore the x coordinate of q must be root 7, okay? That's a place where the gradient is equal to 3. If they had asked us to find the y coordinate, then we'd go back to the original equation, replace the x with root 7, and find the y coordinate. But in this case, um, they did not ask us to find it, so that's fine. Okay, there's the answer. They just said find the exact chord, x coordinate of q. All right, so that completes this question and this paper. Okay, this paper consisted of 10 questions. So if you would like to see other questions from this particular paper, you can go to the playlist on the top right of the screen at the end of this video. Um, other questions from the topic here of differentiation and its applications from P1, you can find in the playlist in the bottom right of the screen. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link down here. And at the top, you'll see a link to a video which shows you how to find what you're looking for in my channel efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.